My name is Brajeshwar. I usually tweet at, at Brajeshwar. Uh, the whole, I did a small example prototype. If you want to go right now and try it out if the internet is working, this is the URL that you can go. Uh, this presentation is based on that. Uh, early in the morning, we went through installation of WordPress, development of plugins, teams, and how to get it approved. And I mean, related to WordPress teams, design and development, plugins, etc. So assuming that people go into team, design and development, you're getting good at it, you're working with clients, you're even selling your themes. But then later on, you need to you know, optimize how you're doing stuff, right? It, if not with other people, even if you come back yourself after a year or after some time, it'll be very difficult for you to track what happened. Uh, how did you make the changes? And what kind of a tools you were using? Those kind of stuff tend to come into the way of your development or your design. So instead, let's work in a little bit more smarter way so that you can focus on what you're good at. That is design and development of WordPress themes or even plugins for that matter. So code management is already done with Git and everything. And you now, you now are good with design and development of your WordPress themes. You're selling it, you're impressing your clients, and you're even working with other people remote. Let's say you're working here, another is in Bangalore, one of your guys in Kolkata. How do you manage that? How does he put a library somewhere there, and how do you update yourself? So I'm, I will try to make it uh, easy and simple so that you can try it out at home. The example will also be available. The slide will also be available. In fact, the slide is already available. So we will use tools such as Node.js, Ruby, SAS, Bower, and Grunt. Uh, these are very simple. We're not going to learn how to write Node.js uh, JavaScript files. No, we're not going to write any Ruby codes. We're going to just use the tools or, so to say, the modules and the libraries available with them. They have already done it. We're just going to use it so that we're going to make our life more easy as a WordPress designer and developer. Earlier, uh, WordPress development, we used PHP, JavaScript, CSS. And the most rudimentary way of doing it is looking through your code, designing it, changing it, and see how it happens in your browser. So you go through it, you spend your time, you write the CSS code, you write the JavaScript codes, and then you figure out if it should be approved on WordPress.org or your client is happy. And then you give away the code nicely, zip it up, more, or maybe even upload to your server, show it to your client, show it to other people, or test it with your QA testers. And once everything is done, you give it all, right? You, you, you distribute it, you deploy it, you distribute it, you give it to your client. You're happy, the client is happy, people are happy because they're using your WordPress teams. So let's take a typical scenario in an environment where you're working with three people, one here, let's say another guy sitting somewhere, and another guy in another city. What if there's a change in the style set? What if there's a change in the CSS? You have to go through the, somebody help push it through Git, you'll pull it, and you go through MERS and go through the whole exercise over and over again. What if instead of using normalized 2.2, something like that, in future, you get upgraded to normalized 3.0? Normalized is the CSS reset uh, library. Or any other thing, use a JavaScript library, particular version of a library, and then you keep updating. What happens when it updates to a new one? Will it break? Or if a new developer or designer has to come into the whole workflow, what happens then? You have to teach him everything? You have to tell him everything what you're using? Or you'll have to jib your code and send it to him? Things like that, right? What if we can automate all of this? What if we can make sure that a particular version is either that or a low version, or is it that or a little higher version, so that everybody can just make it work on the environment and have a seamless workflow? So this is what we have been doing. Once upon a time, we used PHP, CSS, JavaScript to do WordPress team development. And then when you uh, <coughs> develop stuff, you have to check it in your browsers, right? You, you fire up your browser, you refresh it again, write a code, refresh it again, you keep checking that. What if we can also do away with this? What if 
We just do something and it gets updated live on your own browser or maybe even on your server. What if you can do all of that by simply typing a few commands or by simply pushing a few buttons? So, and once you become good, you're already familiar with all the CSS, JavaScript, you're very good, you, you're getting good at this, right? So eventually when you deploy, you started minifying things, you started, you know, concatenating things. You sum up all the JavaScript, concatenate them, minify them, uglify them, now you're getting better, right? You're gonna do that again and again. You have the tools to do it, YUI compressors, CSS, CSS, things like that. You, 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 used, you started using all those tools and you started making your work, workflow or your development better and better. What if we can still automate all of that? So you, you do not have to depend on those tools again and again. What if you can just automate all of those stuff through other tools so that you can just concentrate only on your design and development and just fire those tools, those commands, those buttons when you need them. Even uploading to the server, what if we can automate that also? So you don't have to worry about firing up your FTP client and then upload that, right? Or not just uploading to a server, what if we can sift a whole ready-made zip file so that it does not contain all your .jit, .git, .sass, or all those crappy files that you use during development. If, what if you can clean all of those? What if you can clean all of those and send a zip file to your client? He'll be more happy, right? Or if you're selling it to your merchant, if you just upload that file, then the merchant will also be able to clean it very easily, right? Because there's no going to be no other dirty files that you use during your development. All your SaaS files, all your Git files, all your temporary files and everything. Also, not just that, right? We have to go through the approval of WordPress.org, right? When you upload a JIF file, it, it will tell you that all those Git versions, version files, and all those dot files are not accepted. What if you can clean that also? So this is, this is typically how it looks like while you do a development, right? You have all the files, git ignore files, temp files, sas files, and all this. So we want to clean all of this. We want to have a very clean code. We want to have a very clean folder structures and files so that you can just give it to your clients, upload it to uh, wordpress.org, or upload to your merchant so that you can sell your team. I'm not going to go deep into how you use sas files or uh, coffee script. I'm going to assume that you're going to somehow learn that in one way or the other. So all of those things, let me recap a little bit. You're doing design and development, WordPress themes. You're getting good at it. Your client is getting happy. Your team is also happy now that you are using Git, you're using SAS to do your styles, CoffeeScript to do your JavaScript. Things are getting better. But at the end of the day, as you're serving across multiple locations and working with multiple teams, the problem will begin to crop up when time spans into, say, weeks to months. Sometimes you yourself will even forget what you wrote, right? Have you, has it even occurred to you that you wrote a code and after a month or two, you yourself doesn't really realize what will happen? You have to go back and read your own codes, right? Yeah, what happens if that happens after a year? You come back after a year, or let's say a typical client. You did all the jobs, your WordPress theme is delivered and everything, but after a, year, after a year, the clients come back. Hey, I need a few changes in this WordPress theme. I also have a big uh, project that's coming up. Do you want to check it out? So you checked out, the project is ready. Also at the same time, you want to uh, do a few more things to the earlier theme. So you'll have to read back all the codes, right? You may even, let's say you're using a particular version of SAS to write your style sets, let's say 2.2 or something like that. It's one year, maybe SAS has been upgraded to version four. What will happen? Will it still run in your system? Maybe you're, you have even changed your laptop. You may, you may have even changed your computer altogether, right? What happens? What if you can just go back in that particular directory and say, update all the modules or the libraries that I'm using only to the, only to the version numbers that I specifically say. If I say today, I'm going to work on SAS 3.3 and and I just leave it there. Client 
they had deployed the site and everything. After a year, I come back, and let's assume the SaaS is already, we're running current SaaS version is four, it's not gonna be backward compatible. But if I just open up my folder again, or check it out from Git, and then I start running, hey, just update me, just do me a bundle update, an NPM update, or a Bower install update, right? It's just install only the particular version that you asked for, it'll start running, and you can deploy that. Also, let's think in the other scenario, let's not even involve clients, right? You're working on yourself. You're working with another developer, if not in your own office, somewhere else remote. You want to tell the developer that I'm gonna use a particular version of a library, but other guy is also using a different version of the same, a, a, a little different version of the library. It definitely works. He has just updated it, and that particular updated library works well, and there are even few more features that you can use. So the other developer on a different side of the, the whole development world, he can just update that particular library because his team has said, hey, it's working. So you can use this new feature. What if we don't use this system and we use the conventional method of sharing your codes, like zip files or even git files, right? I'm gonna get, get a conflict that it's not running on my local box. And I may not even be able to compile the files. So that's going to be, that, that's usually how it happens in the development world today. So if, uh, it's not just about WordPress, it's any development thing, right? I update a particular library, it's not running on his machine. I update something, it's not running on his machine. So this thing is about working in such a way that all your libraries are up to date of whatever he has, I'm gonna have it. Whatever I have, he's gonna have it. If that same thing environment is the same, Will it not be easier to do your development, run the codes, build the files? What do you think? Gonna be easy? Would you want to do that, man? Would you want to do it that way or would you want to do it the old way where you ask South on the, on the, uh, on the phone saying, this does not work, but it works on my computer? This is one of the most typical excuse developers and designers give is, hey, it works on mine. So what if you can avoid that, right? If you can set up a system where I have the exact same environment with the exact same libraries, it is very likely that it's going to work on yours. There may be edge cases, or I mean, very few cases that it doesn't work. Maybe then some libraries else is mix, missing, right? Maybe you didn't update your library properly. So that kind of an environment, that kind of a workflow should be something that you should adopt even if you're yourself, even if you're alone, right? The very same example that I gave a little bit earlier, what if you come back after two years? What if you want to update on the theme of the two years and you want to maintain the whole thing without breaking anything, right? Have a self-contained environment which can be deployable by yourself anytime or give it to somebody so that somebody else can deploy it. So let's work smarter, not harder. So why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to learn this a little bit more complex stuff so that it's going to be, I mean, the fact is that that small, upgrade to what you already know, a little bit more complexity into your workflow at the initial beginning is going to really help you throughout in your whole development cycle. Things are going to make more easier, right? So that you can do what? You can focus on your actual work. Well, your actual work is what? The designing and development of your theme so that you can either sell it to your client or you can sell it commercially or you can make your other users happy, right? If you're a free theme developer. And no, Okay, if you save time, what happens? It's a better ROI, right? If you are not going to spend three hours every week just running through cleaning codes and sending files and all those, sending it, zipping it, every, everything. If you, let's say you take only about three to four hours a week out of the 40 hours a week that you usually work. You're gonna end up spending about 16 hours per month just doing, running those talks. I mean, that's a repetitive talks, right? That's a grunt. It's kind of like a grunting world, right? Just chores. You're going to do it every day. What if you can save those time? The same 16 hours you save can be converted into money, right? Money for you, money for your company. Or you, I mean, you can do a lot more stuff. You can even go out and volunteer. So let's introduce something uh, called Node.js and Ruby. Don't worry. We're not going to write any Ruby thingy. Nothing Ruby about it or nothing Node about it, right? We're gonna just use the modules, the libraries, the tools they already have. It's typically a developer's world, but we're gonna just use it. 
whether we are WordPress designers or WordPress developers. We're going to just use the tools, so don't worry about it. It's like saying, we're going to just use Windows. You don't have to know what's happening inside the OS. One of the very powerful library or the tool is called Bower. Bower is a library management tool. So let's say, have you heard of Normalize? Heard of Normalize? OK. Uh, or jQuery? OK, Modernizer. All of this, right? Let's pick a scenario. I'm doing a WordPress development today, and I'm going to work with five guys, right? Or five people, and a lot more people. And, or let's assume I don't even know how many people I'm going to work with. Today, I settle on something called Normalize 3. Normalize is the reset style set so that it's a more center reset style set, right? So it in initiates a browser, more browser compatible kind of styling for your team. So I use Normalize. And I use uh, jQuery 2.0 or something like that today. And I start developing, developing on it, right? And I didn't just download and put it. I used Bower to do it. I say Bower install me Normalize, or Bower install me jQuery, or Bower install me Modernizer, or even Bower install me Foundation, or even Bower install me Bootstrap. If I do that, Bower will save a particular uh, kind of like a JSON file, in your folder, I'll show you everything. I even have the codes ready for you to download anytime. If you're online, you can go ahead and download it. So, Bower maintains that list, right? It's pretty much like who comes from a Linux. Linux have all the very good package management thing, right? So Bower is like, like that kind of thing for us, for the center people, not very geeky, still designers and developers. So use Bower, maintain that. So in future, if I give it to somebody, I'm gonna just tell them, hey, just run Bower install. And this guy will say, hey, Bower install in the particular folder. Then you're going to just download all the libraries that I did, that I used, that I installed, and I said that this is the one you're going to use. So what he gets? He gets everything listed very nicely, very quick, and it is, then, it is there for him to start working straight away. Right? That's Bower for you. The other tool is you can pick one of those. These are various options, SAS, LESS, or Stylus. Anybody know what this is? It's a, awesome. Uh, it's a preprocessor. What is a preprocessor? It comes before your actual thing, before your actual process, right? CSS. We have been writing CSS the raw way, and CSS is a very, very non-forgiving thing, right? It's not even a language. It's not even a script. You can't even write script on it. Uh, so CSS is very unforgiving. It's, it's very rude, right? It's very raw. If you, you have to use, let's say, change the color of the background across the side, or let's even say, change the border radius of all the buttons across your side, how would you do it in CSS? You're, you're going to find the class, the IDs, or you're going to refactor the whole thing so that your border radius is the particular thing that the client wants. Let's suppose the client, one of the, let's suppose the CEO or the chip and marketing guys says, Hey, all the buttons, it's a bit smooth, awesome, stay with it. You stay with it, you work on it for a month, and then the guy in, in that office goes away and comes with a new, the new, you got a new CEO, right? And the CEO comes and says, hey, I've been looking at buttons these days, this is not that rounded, I need more smoother, more rounded, right? So you're gonna decide, oh, I need now 20 pixel rounded. What are you gonna do? You're going to look through your CSS. If you're smart enough, you're going to say find and replace and do all the changes, right? What if you have even vendor prefixes like Mozilla, WebKit? You're going to change all of that also, right? What if you can do all of this What one single variable? Have you heard of variables? Variable, the first thing in programming, right? So if I'm going to set something like border radius for my project, five pixels. So I'm going to use everywhere this particular border radius unless there's a few specific Special cases, maybe like a special button that has call to action, right? So when the client comes back or when you decide to change that particular border radius, if you just change at this particular variable from 5 to 10 pixels, it's going to change everywhere, right? Or you can write functions. You can write mixins that you can use again and again. So that is SAS for you, a smarter way. There is SAS less or stylus, a smarter way for you to write style sets, all right? Grunt. 
Grunt is the meat of what we're going to do in that particular, in, in, in our particular development environment. So b even before I go in, have you heard of Grunt or have you tried doing it? Anybody use Grunt? Okay. Before that, let me ask a bit of a question. Am I getting a bit technical? Should I get more technical? <laughs> okay. So Grunt, Grunt is known as a tax runner, right? Why is it called a tax runner? Because you can define tax. If you can have somebody doing everything for you, will it not be cool? If I just set a few rules, right? Say, if this guy comes up and asks me a question, that guy will answer. But if that lady asks me a more fantastic question, that guy is going to answer. Will it not be nice? I can have it relay everywhere, right? I can have an automatic thing, tax relay everything. Tax done for you once you set up rules. Will it not be great, right? It'll be awesome, right? The moment I get hungry, if the cook starts cooking without even me having to tell because I have set up a task that when I get hungry, I just press a button somewhere and the cook cooks it. What if it can be done like that? Will it not be cool? So we can do that with Grunt. Grunt, and again, you're not writing anything. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. You're not writing anything at all. So Grunt also has lots of, as it is open source, right? Grunt also has lots of predefined ways so that you can use tasks. Have you used something called IFFFT, if then else? Very much like that. Or even Jepir, right? Jepir, something like that. You have used something like that. So people have done it for you. You just have to include them. You just have to use it. You just have to know which button to press. You just have to know what do I do, right? Which wire to plug in so that I can start pressing the buttons. So Grant does that, right? So now, when you go, go deeper, are you scared? Are you scared of the things that has already been done? Bauer, Grant? Things like that, right? We're not even talking about PHP, CSS, and JavaScript anymore. We're talk I'm assuming that you're already good at it. I'm assuming that you're already doing it. I'm talking about more, better ways, smarter ways of doing things, automating stuff as much as possible so that you can focus on your design and development that really earns you money, that really earns you uh, people's appreciation, people's love, that really makes you happy. OK, so when you look at these tools, right, you may start thinking, what the heck? Why would I do that? I just want to stay with my cool and comfort zone where I know I can open a PHP, change few stops, or even a CSS, JavaScript, I can just simply change stops. Or maybe I can just go and delete few of the folder structures that I don't need whenever I need to deploy. Just copy them, paste it, zip it, send it, right? That, so why, why would you want to do that? But then. If you start thinking of what benefit you might get, you might also start thinking, why not, right? Unless you think, why not, you will never do it. So if, I mean, most of the difficult stuffs are difficult unless you try to attempt to do it. So why not? Let's do it, right? Let's start using something called grunt. So this is just a depiction. Uh, it's just magic, right? You, you wave a wand and start doing it. So once you set up things, once you learn all the magical stuff in Hogwarts, you can use all of this uh, spell to do lots of magic stuff, right? So we learn, we, we just download a few stuff, we just uh, include a few of the tasks and start running it. Any idea? Uh, by the way, it's, it doesn't really exist, uh, any Harry Potter fan. I just made it up. <laughs> so, so earlier on, I told you, right? So you become advanced, you start knowing it, you start knowing things about concatenation, uglify, minification. So you use tools available to you so that you can use, so, so that you are compressing your files, you're making your files smaller. You are, you are combining, so let's say, you will have three style sets because three developers are working, you, it's in everyone's a separate style set. What if you can combine them? Should I, want, should, should I go into the reason of why you're doing it? Yeah, or okay. Can anybody explain why do you have to concatenate, amplify, and magnify your static files? Try. Make it faster, load it faster. And? Reduce the HTTP request. Awesome, right? These are the very, very first initial reason why you should do. Instead of loading a 100 kilobyte file, if you can load only 20 kilobyte file, it will be awesome, right? Instead of uh, your browser sending a request to get three style sets, if it gets only one style set, it's awesome, right? Well, once, comes back, it's faster, right? However fast the internet becomes, if you are on a broadband T1, whatever, one gigabyte, 
the lower your file size, the better it is. And it will remain true for quite a while. And while you're developing, right, the problem with development and let's say on a staging server you're, or a demo server, you're giving it to your client, right? What happens, there are quite a bit of a few problems where it caches and the clients will come back and say it doesn't work and you're gonna say, hey, you've, have you refreshed the browser? Have you, uh, have you removed the cache, right? Sometimes if the client doesn't even understand what that means, you're gonna teach him, save, refresh, right? So what if you can do that automatically? I'm not going to let you do it. What if you can do that automatically? What if you can version your files? What if you can fingerprint the files that you change through Grunt and through Git and, and deploy, right? And even finally, when everything is done, what if you can clean up the code so nicely and create a GIF file? Not you. Grunt's doing a GIF file for you. When you say, let's say, Grunt deploy, it cleans the whole file, it removes anything that's not needed for WordPress, uploads a particular folder to your server, burst the cache and everything, and then release, and then create a GIF file. Hell, man, if the merchant allows an API, we'll release there also. Okay, let's not even go there, but let's release an archive file so you can upload it manually or drop it to your merchant. Will it not be easy? Just have to upload, right? And you're no longer doing the GIF yourself, trying to figure out if the, uh, some sort of a hidden file, dot, dot file is there. So, Basically, when everything is there, what if every time you work, everything is so set up, you just start doing stuff, and when you're ready, you just say deploy, 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 deploy. What if you can do something like that? Or what if you can even make this deploy do something else? What if you say, I'm happy, then start deploying? You can change all of this stuff. Okay, let's try if the internet is working. Let me do a demo. Uh, before that, any questions? No questions? I wasn't technical enough? Okay, reserve the question, I will do a demo. Let's hope so. Can you see those files? Sbow components, node modules, SESS and things like that, right? Few files here. Look at the folder very carefully. Browser components, CSS, JavaScript, right? I'm going to just say grant deploy. I have said all of those. So I, the example, the file is downloadable already. It's even on GitHub. If you want to contribute, it's there. So you can download. I'll give you the link. Don't even worry about it. The slide is already on slide here also. So, when I run this, check very carefully, and I will even go back to the folder, what happens there, I'll also show you that, yeah? So it looks up my SAS files, cleans it up, oh, it's pretty fast. So it replaces even your images, it will even use uh, OT images, JPNG, uh, PNG, clean up all those, and I can even tell it to do lots of, lots of other stuff, right? Let's hope the Wi-Fi works now. So it's trying to upload to my server, it's here, it's a demo server that I run. Lots of things, cleans up everything, bow everything, right? It's set up. Okay, don't worry. So far, so good. Here, here's a new folder. Can you tell me what's a new folder? This. Double click on this, there's a new folder. That folder was created by the grunt task that I said. I said, whenever there's a, when I'm ready to deploy or when I'm ready to serve the files, create me a nice folder with only the files I want inside this. It's a very basic WordPress thingy inside this and create me a nice GIF, nice GIF files. It even has a versioning, right? The version I didn't even type it is used through Git version. I use Git version to do it. And let's look at other files, right? The CSS, there's a minified CSS and has the scriptic number A, B, D, E, 6, E, E, right? I use file revision to revise a file every time 
I do something. So it'll burst the case automatically because that's going to ask for a new file because the new file is already done, right? JavaScript also minified in one single file. So this not module is a folder that is specific just to me in Git, right? So I can have a Git ignore that says, ignore all my not modules. Why? Because that particular setting which says, what modules do I need to install is specific to me. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm a designer and my other guy is a developer. He's using other things that I don't need maybe. So I'm gonna just install a few things. Or the hell with it, I'll just install everything. But to avoid conflicts and everything, we'll just list a package of what you're gonna install from Bower to, to Node. And we will push to Git whatever is common to everybody. We will push the SCSS files. We'll not even commit the style sheet file so that it never conflicts. We'll generate on our own, right? So what happens, but what happens during development, right? So it even syncs up. It's not a bit, it's a bit not clear, I'm sorry about that. It's done without error, right? The Wi-Fi was working. It uploads to my file. It's fingerprints and checks it. Is there any file change in that particular file? If there's a change in the file, it uploads. If there's no change, it doesn't upload, right? It's going to optimize my CSS, combine my JavaScript, optimizes even the images used, and uploads everything. It also creates a GIF file for me so that I can upload to my merchant or give it out to WordPress.org or give it out to other people to download it. And I miss out on something. There's something called a grunt uh, local serve or local server. You can keep running a grunt serve, and if you, even if you change your PHP files, style set files, JavaScript file, You'll start updating your browser on its own so you can test it there. If you want to go deeper, if you want to go deeper, you can even do something like Phantom CSS, Phantom JS, or even you can even do regression testing and everything. All right? So, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Like like you said that it's renamed the CSS file. So when we upload it to server, so does it delete the old file or it keeps the old file also and new file also? So every file can be checked against an MD5 hash file, right? Hashing system. I don't do it, Grunt does it. So it checks a hash file, it's something like a checksum, right? It figures out fingerprints. What time was it uploaded? What's the size? If I can have a difference, right? I'll re-upload re it. Let's say for PSPs, I don't want to do a PSP dot number, 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 right? Yeah. So let's, let's look at, I'll show you a small piece of code and make you understand more easier. So if you look at my header files, right? I looked at the template directory and I said, build CSS into a main.min.css. Looks at all of this. Is this right? So when grunt file runs through it, it checks up what's happening with the main CSS. And then it will replace these files. This is my development file, right? Let's look at the distribution file. See, I didn't do that. Magic. Did I do that? No, right? I just ran it for you. The distribution folder was not even there when I run it. When I say grunt deploy, it writes that. It even understand this particular thing. It, it, it rewrites the whole file name. It replaces that, right? right? So I can do that. So it's true grunt. Questions? Yes. Hi. Myself, Virendra. Uh, I am just a newbie in this SaaS and Bower stuff. I use uh, foundation for te developing themes. Mm -hmm. And uh, since they have started using Bower components, I am introduced to this. Um, while developing on Foundation 5, uh, I'm just confused about installing Bower components. So is it a uni uh, universal available service or do I need to install it every time while creating a new project? So how this whole system work is that yeah. there has been a belief in the development circle that for a particular 
project or an environment, it is better to have a self-contained environment. Meaning, if I can take this particular container or my particular folder, in our case of WordPress development, and just give it to a new guy and tell him, run these three commands, right? Say, install the bundles, that is the Ruby gems that's needed. It will look up through the uh, Here, it's called a bowel gestion, right? It's saying, what do I need, right? All those few things, the bowel file. Now we're not using any bowel model, so I'll show you a package model instead. See, look at those files. These are the files needed, right? So I don't even need to tell you what to install. When I do an NPM install or a bower install, no. at least install uh, for you. My question is different a bit. Okay. Uh, if I am, I am developing a theme for X, and now I'm uh, developing for Y client. Mm -hmm. When I set a new project, do I need to install it again? Actually, I was coming back to that question. Okay. So when I say a package module, right, a particular folder, it is better to be self alone, which is why these days there are a lot of VMs like Vagran, what is the other one? Docker, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning why? So the moment you start developing for client A, you can put that, uh, project and give it to anybody and they will start developing from it. Do you have to install again and again? Yes, for that particular project. Why? Because client A may be using foundation four point something and client B may be using foundation five or something like that. I don't want you to conflict with other developer or I don't want you yourself conflicting yourself, right? Okay. And second query is uh, if I'm using command line, I have Ruby console and I have also uh, another window then should I uh, compass window, then which, which should I use for, because grunt runs uh, through Ruby console. So and, grunt. Uh, command you, line is allowed to use compass also. Yeah, yeah, so if you use grunt, grunt, then you don't even need to run, uh, run any of the other things because grunt okay. can actually call all of those. When I say grunt serve, it will even call compass, SAS, and Anything that you need, which you have already defined here. So meaning your compass will get, style, uh, get compiled, your SAS will get compiled, you don't need to run a separate compass thing. Okay, so Bower, SAS and Grunt need to be installed once and required modules should be installed per project. Yeah, the Bower okay. itself should be installed per only once. The okay. components can be installed per project. It should be per project, okay. yes. Thank you. Awesome. Hello. Yeah, uh, actually, basically, we develop a web portal, means uh, sites for the mobile mobile phones, but uh, we are struggling in CSS and all. Uh, like, uh, I, if I fix the CSS for a particular device, it definitely breaks on other other devices. So uh, I'm uh, new to this SaaS and all. Um, if you have any suggestions for me that that can fix my problem in I mean, uh, for all the devices, I can write a uh, small and sweet CSS. That okay, um, uh, there are two components to the whole question. The thing is, first of all, what you're asking for is somebody else to do your job. You're saying, my mm -hmm. site is not working in this, how do I write the code? You have to learn to write the code first, but eventually there are tools to help you. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna answer in a little bit twisted way, right? Let's say you are already developing and you're happy with your desktop. You're also happy developing on a tablet. You start seeing on a mobile phone. But as in a developer's world, it is difficult to test on each and every browser, each and every platform, right? Yeah. What if you can automate those stuff or at least have an ability to take a snapshot whenever something changes so it will help you. That will at least help you, right? Besides that, you still need to learn CSS. I can't help yes. you there. So there are tools, Grunt itself, has lots of modules, like PhantomJS for JavaScript, even there is a Phantom CSS. BBC even has a tool, I've forgotten that, I, and Facebook also has. Also, you can use other services like browsers, browser stack? Browser what? No, there's something called browser stack or something like that. It, says, it gives you an API, right? So while you're developing, you can ping that, so whenever you're ready, right, you can say, Give me the sc screenshot of Windows XP running IE6. How does it look like? 
And you can have this multitudes of them. There are like hundreds and two hundreds and a lot more of combinations and permutations of platform, browsers, and everything. If you can have those screenshots, will it not be easier for you to start comparing and figure out where the error might be, right? It's Still, in grunt or it's in grunt or some different? Uh, it isn't. It, it can be part of grunts. First of all, remember, grunt simply uses tools that are already existing. So you can use them standalone or you can use it as a grunt tax. So when you say tax, somebody still need to do it, right? A cook need to still cook it, right? Mm -hmm. You need to get right. that cook. You just have to figure out how do you ask the cook to cook. Okay. okay. Uh, so let's say I'm collaborating with multiple developers, mm -hmm. right? So uh, do I need to share all the uh, config, uh, the JSONs with them as well? Yeah. So. The JSON file, the package JSON file, is the only thing that you need to share, not the actual modules that you downloaded. Because those package JSON file is the one that's telling your command that, hey, you need to upload this, download this, uh, upgrade this, and just that, right? Okay, awesome. Cool.